Welcome pre-calculus students to class today. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you're ready to take some notes today and learn some math. Uh, let's cover some, hopefully you're surviving the snow okay. Hopefully you've had some fun in it. Um, we've had a good time sled riding and actually our kids have gone sled riding during the day and also at night too just to make it more fun. So hopefully you've been able to enjoy some of the snow. Uh, Matthew, I have no idea what it's like over there in your in your neck of the woods. I know over here in Caleb and I, we got a lot of snow and all that stuff. So um, some announcements. Your tests are due. Now, Caleb, I did not show favoritism, but um, you understand. Matthew, um, until late yesterday, I'm not so sure people could get in or out of our subdivision. So um, just to make sure <clears throat> that Matthew was totally safe, um, I did tell him he could turn his test in on Saturday when the temperatures are really warm and everything should be melted um, by then. I don't ever want to uh, do anything that's unsafe. So, um, Caleb, you've turned your test in. I will let you know when I've graded that. Matthew, yours is due by Saturday. I am also sending you guys a quiz on Saturday. Now, remember, we're only going to school 17 weeks. I've taken one week off because of the fact that you do quizzes on Saturdays. So... Um, do remember that and then your integrity sheets stay on top of those the next time we meet for a test all of those have to be done if you get behind you know how amazingly difficult it is to get caught up okay and so um, make sure you're staying on top of your integrity sheets let me grab a drink here of water and we're going to get started okay we are going to continue our study today of permutations let me pause and say this um, hindsight is always 2020. I really should have combined these two days of videos into one day. I didn't realize how easy the homework was in this section, but that's okay. It should be an encouragement to you. Um, the, the video today will be short, so I really should have combined this with yesterday, so it will be a pretty short video. But we are going to continue our studies today of permutations. As we continue in our studies of permutations, some of the problems might become confusing. And what I mean by that is that it might become hard to tell which kind of permutation problem we are solving. My advice is to diligently do all of the homework and thoroughly watch the help videos for for the problems that you don't understand remember practice really helps okay that's really really important all right let's continue on there is one situation that we did not look at yesterday and that is what we're going to look at now Please copy this in your notes. We are going to look at something today <clears throat> called distinguishable permutations. Distinguishable permutations. The lesson number is 10.5, and the date today is the 30th. All right, a little dyslexic there. Let me turn that around. There we go. All right, distinguishable permutations. Now, I'd like you to copy this problem in your notes. Pretend we have four blue marbles and three red marbles. Now, you learned yesterday, if I said, tell me, tell me how many different ways you could arrange these marbles, I taught you yesterday, you would put seven blanks. Now, don't write this down, just watch, okay? Um, I do want you to write this down. I mean, go ahead and put the problem in your notes. You have four blue marbles and three red marbles. But anyways, I taught you yesterday that you would put how many options would you have for the first blank? Seven. How many options for the second blank? Six. How many options for the third blank? Five. And on and on you would go. So the answer would really be seven factorial. But I would like to point something out to you. That would be a fine way to do it. But here's the problem with that. Let me show you something. See these four blue marbles? I've numbered them for you for a reason. Now, let's see if I have all of these separate. I do. Okay, good. Now, look, guys. Watch this carefully. If I put marble number one here, marble number two here, and marble number three, and marble number four, one, two, three, and four, if I did that, now watch this. Would that not look the exact same? Would it not look the same if I put marble 2 here and marble 1 here? It would, because they're both 
blue. Or I could put blue marble number three here, blue marble number one here, blue marble number four over here, and then blue marble number three here. And if I did that, it would still look the same. Do you see what I'm saying? And so when you have objects that are matching, it becomes a little different, okay? And so if I asked you to tell me how many different ways these seven marbles could be arranged, you would do it like you did yesterday. No problem, okay? However, if I said, tell me the distinguishable permutations, and what that means is, is tell me how many different ways you could arrange these marbles so that they look differently. In other words, if you had marble 1, 2, 3, and 4, and then you had marble 1, 4, 2, and 3, since these four are blue, since these four are blue and these four are blue, this would really be the same arrangement. I would not count that as two different arrangements, okay? Because they look the same. No matter what order these four marbles are, right here, there's still four blue and four blue. And so when I ask you for distinguishable permutations, it's done a little differently. And here's the formula or the method that you use. What you do, and by the way, if you want to see a proof of this, the formula, um, it's not super easy to understand, and I'm not going to take class time to go over this, but on page 888, at the top, you will see a proof of where this method or formula comes from that I'm about ready to show you. But here's how you solve a problem when I ask you not for the permutations but for the distinguishable permutations. First of all you count your total objects which in this case is 7 so we put 7 factorial. Then we're going to divide out the ones that are repetitive. For example how many blue marbles do you have? four. So in the denominator I simply put four factorial. That's easy. How many red marbles do I have? They're all the same. How many repeats? Three. So I'm going to put three factorial. Now that's all you have to do. Now how you finish this is up to you. You could type the whole thing into your calculator and hit enter. Let me get a drink here real quick. Or you can simplify. For me I like to simplify. I just very quickly put seven 6 times 5 times 4 and instead of putting 3, 2, 1 I put 4 factorial and then look I can cross off my 4 factorial with my 4 factorial and see this 3 factorial that really means what? 3 times 2 times 1 right? So I'm going to cross off my 3 and put a 1 and cross off my 6 and put a 2. Why? Because 3 goes into 3 and 3 goes into 6. Now I've got a 2 and a 2. So I can cross off my 2 and put a 1. So it's 1 times 1 times 1. Cross off my 2 and put a 1. So up top I have 7 times 1 times 5. That's 35 over 1 times 1 times 1, which is 1. And so my answer would be 35. And so whatever method you prefer, some of you simply might like to type in 7 factorial over 4 factorial times 3 factorial, and that's fine. And by the way, if you've forgotten where it is, and, and Caleb, I'm not sure on your calculator where factorial is, Matthew, for you, you hit the math button, and then scroll across the top to the fourth option over, I think it says PRB, and then scroll down until you find the exclamation point. And I think that is option number four, I believe. But anyways, um, that is how you do this problem. So it's not too difficult. You just have to understand uh, when I'm asking for a regular permutation or when I'm asking for a distinguishable permutation. Okay? All right. Let's try one more. And then I'm going to let you start on your homework. I told you it's a pretty short video. And I really should have combined these two lessons I was not being lazy, nor was I babying you guys. I just didn't realize how easy this would be. Okay, go ahead and copy this in your notes, please. In how many distinguishable ways can the letters of the word Cincinnati be arranged? Now, if I had not asked for a distinguishable, then you would do it the old way. The old way would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So you'd have 10 blanks. 
and of course the first blank you have 10 options the next blank 9 the next blank 8 so your answer would simply be 10 factorial okay but we're not asking for you to do it the old way I'm asking you to tell me how many distinguishable ways can the word Cincinnati be written okay well let's look for pairs I have two C's I have three I's ends I have three ends I have an A and I have a T now the best thing to do to make sure you don't miss anything is to count all the letters and make sure you have the right amount so I'm going to slide this out of the way I'm going to erase this right here let's see Cincinnati has 10 letters right 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 9 10 so I should have 10 letters 2 5 8 9 10 so yes here's all the letters so here's what I just taught you to do since we're dealing with distinguishable permutations remember what to do in the numerator you put your total amount of objects factorial in the bottom you list out your pairs or the ones that are multiples so I have two C's so that's two factorial I have three I's that would be three factorial and I have three N's that would be three factorial there we go and now we're ready to go ahead and solve the problem now again however you choose to do it is up to you for me I'm gonna put two times one times uh, three times two times one times 3 factorial. I'm going to leave this right here just 3 factorial. And why? Because I'm going to put 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3 factorial. So cross this off, cross this off. Here's a 2, that's gone. Make this a 2. Here's a 2, that's gone. Cross off this 2. Here's a 3. Cross off your 3. I've got nothing left. You can put a 1 if you want. Here's a 2. So now I'm ready simply. My whole denominator is 1. And here I would have what? Uh, it's going to be pretty difficult to do in my head. I won't try to do that. But we'd have 90 uh, times 8, 720 uh, times 7 times 2 times 5 would give us 50,400. And again, if you prefer typing the whole thing into your calculator, that's fine also. So there we go. So how many distinguishable ways can the letters of Cincinnati be arranged? 50,400 different ways. Now, Mr. Earhart, I have never heard of more uh, of, of dumber math in my life. How's this practical? Well, you're going to see. You're going to do all word problems today, and they're going to talk to you about how many different telephone numbers um, can you have arranging the seven digits and thus that tells you how many total telephone numbers you can have for an area they talk about zip codes um, post office social security numbers stuff like that so it's, it's very practical and it's very helpful math okay here's your assignment uh, right here page 889 31 through 41 all please get started right away on that work on your homework and check your answers as you go you can check the even answers with the video check the odds of the back of the book and any of the ones you're having problems with be sure and watch the math video and get some help okay have a good day call or email if you have any questions